Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because I finally got my hands on a mini PC I've had my eye on for a little while. This is known as the Leva One A300, and when it comes to the Leva brand, I've actually reviewed a few of their mini PCs. They're the company behind the world's smallest Ryzen PC we reviewed on the channel a few months ago, but most of the time, when it comes to their mini PCs, they're powered by mobile chips, be it Intel or AMD. But when it comes to the One Series, this is actually using an AM4 socket, so we can throw Athlon in here or Ryzen, and it does support up to the 5700G. Now since there's no built-in GPU on this mini PC, we will have to use an APU-based solution up to 65 watts, and at the time of making this video, the 5700G is the most powerful AM4 APU on the market. And as you can see, it's definitely a super small form factor PC, and being such a small PC, we've actually got a lot of I.O. for its size. Inside of the box, you're going to receive the mini PC itself. It also comes with a stand. We've got a 120 watt power supply and the custom cooler. This is a copper cooler with a blower style fan. And hopefully it can keep that 5700G nice and cool because we've got eight cores and 16 threads. We will be running this at 65 watts. Now, if I was to build a bigger PC with the 5700G, I can get this thing to pull around 180 watts. But in a small form factor, we need to keep it low but I still think we're going to get some great performance out of this machine. Taking a look at the internals here, obviously this comes as a bare bones kit. You will have to add your own CPU, RAM, and storage, but it does have Wi-Fi 6 built in. It's already pre-installed, ready to go. It does support a single M.2 SSD and a 2.5 inch drive. And when it comes to RAM, this utilizes SODEM RAM. We can go up to 64 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz, but in the BIOS, we can overclock it a little bit as long as your modules can handle it. So putting something like this together is super easy. As you can see, we've got our 2.5 inch bay over here. If that's all you're gonna use, you can use a mechanical or an SSD. I would highly recommend using an M.2 drive. You're just gonna get a lot faster speeds out of it. And with this, it uses a clip system for that M.2. And for this build, I'm gonna go with a 512 gigabyte Intel NVMe SSD. I'm also gonna add a little heatsink here because they're cheap enough. There's no built-in cooling for the storage and these can get quite hot. So I've just added this little heatsink here. I don't need to remove that drive bay. They've left enough room to put everything in here. It's a screwless system. You could always add one if you needed to, but this little clip system does work out quite well with these drives. And I can get the system up and running with this drive and later on add a 2.5 inch SSD really easily. For the APU, I went with the 5700G. It's a 65 watt part. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.6. So we're just gonna slot it right here in the AM4 socket. We're good to go there. Now it's time for the RAM. Like I mentioned, this uses SODEM RAM, and I just opted to use 16 gigabytes of Crucial running at 3200 megahertz. And once I get this installed, the next thing I need to do is install the included heatsink. Now it's a very odd shaped heatsink, but it's got that blower style fan, fits perfectly inside of this case, and it also makes contact with the VRM on the motherboard. It does include these thermal pads pre-installed, but you know, swapping this out a few times might be an issue if you lose one of those or kind of rip it up. So kind of know what you want to get into the first time. I would personally go with the 5600G or the 5700, but you can go as low as the dual core Athlon APUs if you want. So we've about got this finished, just installed the fan, no screws here, it's got two little standoffs. And once we throw the cover on, we can take a look at the I.O. Up front here, we have two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and two USB Type-C ports. These are also using USB 3.2 Gen 2. We've also got audio in and out, and moving around back, we've got our power input, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, they've left VGA here for some reason, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, and two more USB 3.2 ports. The rear USB 3s are Gen 1, the front is all Gen 2. And yeah, once it's all said and done, we've definitely got a super small form factor system. Just take a look at it right next to that Xbox controller. And when it comes to the operating system, you could install Linux if you want to, and I might do a dedicated video on that. But for this video, I've got Windows 11 installed. Okay, so here we are. Everything went off without a hitch, and as you can see, I'm using this in the horizontal position, but it does come with that vertical stand. It's really up to you. I just think it fits really nice under these monitors. As you can see, we've got the 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and we will take a look at the BIOS in a second because there are a few changes we can make. And of course, we've got the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 2000 megahertz. 
when it comes down to using a system like this as an everyday desktop, it's going to work out just fine. We have plenty of power on the CPU side and the GPU side when it comes to everyday tasks. Web browsing, 4K video playback, email checking, you can do some photo editing on the 5700G, and some light 1080p video editing is totally possible. It does have that Wi-Fi 6 module pre-installed, so we've got really fast Wi-Fi here. You've also got the option to use 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and so far through my testing, the cooler has actually held up really well. I haven't run into any thermal throttling yet, but I still got some more tests to do. From the BIOS, we can change this to performance mode, but it's in its stock form right now with the fan profile. And even with the heavy loads that I've thrown at it so far, I haven't heard it ramp up to 100%. Now, I'm sure that this little thing can get loud, given that we have that blower-style cooler system on it, but under normal use, it's definitely a quiet little machine. But before we move any further, I did want to test out Forza Horizon 5. Alright, so here it is. We're at 1080p low settings with resolution scale set to quality. Looking really good here, and if we turn V-Sync on, we could get a nice steady 60 out of it. We're a little over 60, and in the previous builds that I've done with the 5700G, usually I run this at 720p medium settings, and we get a really good frame rate out of it, but it does handle it at 1080p, as you can see. We're pulling close to 80 watts out of this APU, and the temps are looking pretty decent. We're at 75, 74 degrees. Not bad at all. I was expecting a little higher temps, given that we haven't changed the fan curve at all. So next up, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS, and I'm actually a big fan of this. I'm not sure if they're still calling them visual BIOSes, but it looks pretty good. Over here, in the easy mode at least, we've got some fan profiles that we can choose from. Normal, quiet, silent. We've also got our CPU temps, voltages, and everything like that. But we've got an advanced section right here. And from the advanced section, there's quite a bit we can change, but when it comes to overclocking directly from the BIOS, it's kind of a no-go on this little chipset. But when it comes down to it, we're working with such a small form factor PC and kind of a limited cooling system that overclocking the 5700G just really wouldn't work out. But we can set our memory clock. Now with the memory I have in here, it's 3200 megahertz by Crucial. And if it came down to it, I could probably overclock this from the BIOS up to around 3400, which would help out with a little bit of GPU performance. But for all of my tests, we're going to leave it just like it is at 3200 megahertz. Just note that yes, we can from the BIOS. But yeah, that's about it when it comes to overclocking anything at all on this little system, unless you want to use the third party application from within Windows. The next thing I did was run some benchmarks. And first up, we have PC Mark 10. We've got a total score of 6,273, looking really good as an everyday desktop with these kind of scores. Next up, we've got Geekbench 5, single core, 1536, looking great for Zen 3, multi, 7830. I have seen the 5700G score higher on the multi-core side of things, but we're a bit limited by the wattage this thing's putting out. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score, 17,929. Fire Strike came in with a 4,037. And finally, we have Time Spy with a 1,529. We could definitely increase the performance of the iGPU with faster RAM or just overclocking what we have, but like I mentioned, I wanted to run this at 3200 MHz. But the way it's set up right now, these benchmarks aren't looking that bad given the form factor of this PC. So now we're going to move over to some more PC game testing and then we'll get into some emulation. Here we have GTA 5, and with the latest optimizations to the Radeon drivers, this game is performing better than ever on these APUs. We're at 1080p with a high normal mix, and I'm getting an average of 81 FPS. Totally playable on this machine. And remember, we didn't have to drop this down to 720 or even 900. We're at 1080 right now. High normal settings. Next on the list, we have The Witcher 3. I'm at 720p with a low-medium mix. We can actually get an average of around 73 FPS out of this game. Unfortunately, even low 1080 is a bit much. We average around 55. But you can run this at 1080p high settings and lock it at 30 and still have a really good experience with this game. I've been really impressed with the new patches, the Cyberpunk 2077. We're at low 1080p, and I do have Fidelity FX set to performance, 
we can get an average of around 37 FPS. And this will run at 60 720p low, but I just wanted to see what it would do at 1080. When it comes to playing Elden Ring on this system, it's really trying its hardest to get up there to 60, but unfortunately, even at 720p low, we only get an average of around 52 FPS. With a little more on that GPU and some faster RAM, I think we could probably pull off 60 FPS, 720p low, but we're kind of limited here with that 3200 megahertz RAM. And the final PC game for this video is God of War. Here it is at 720p. We've got the original settings going and Fidelity FX is actually set to quality instead of performance. I'm getting an average of 35 FPS. Was really hoping for a little more, but uh, when it comes to this GPU, remember we're still based on Vega. But now it's time to move over to a little bit of high-end emulation, and first on the list we have PS2 using PC SX2, 1080p DirectX 11 back in. We're at the balance preset here with Sly Cooper, looking really good. And with the 5700G, there are some easier to emulate games that can go up to 1440p and even 4K. Moving over to the Dolphin emulator, here we have Tatsunoko versus Capcom for Wii. We're at 1440p, again, using the DirectX 11 back in. And with this, if you want to go with Vulcan, you definitely can, but I just left it at DirectX 11 because it works really well. And finally, we've got PS3 using RPCS3. Vulcan back in, we're at the stock settings, so it's 720p. And if we take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're pulling close to 88 watts and by the end of this run I did have a maximum temperature of 75 degrees Celsius, but this little cooler is doing a really good job on this chip. I also always like to check out total system power consumption when it comes to these small form factor PCs and this was much better than I thought it would be. At idle we averaged 23 watts, keep in mind this is plugged into a kilowatt meter while testing everything. Average gaming, we got around 83, and the max I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 118 watts. So yeah, I think the Leva 1 is a great little mini PC. We've got a lot of different APU options we can add to this, from Athlon up to the highest end APU like we saw on this video, the 5700G. I think one of the best options you could add to this would be the 5600G. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, and it wouldn't pull as much wattage, but we'd get very similar performance. But in the end, I think this would be a great option if you're into these super small form factor do-it-yourself PCs. It comes bare bones, so remember, you gotta add your storage, RAM, and APU. We've got tons of options, and if you're interested in learning more, I will leave links in the description to leave his website. I'm also going to leave some links down below on everything else that I used with this setup you saw in this video. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to see anything else running on this rig, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.